lost it, and uh, I'm going to talk about uh, map mapping communities, community mapping, and also a little bit of uh, PR for the Hack Day on Sunday to encourage people to come along to that. Uh, so, uh, according to one website, uh, which you can uh, type your username into, I'm an affected uh, OpenStreetMap mapper. So, that makes you my neighbours. <laughs> uh, so, I'm going to speak uh, about sort of mapping communities. So, sort of who's mapping and what they're mapping, and how that kind of maybe sort of suggests what we can do to encourage people to uh, uh, sort of take part in community mapping. Uh, so, so talk about Pack Day, there's going to be a bit of audience interaction, so get prepared for that. Uh, it's going to be a bit boring bit, um, and it's going to be a big reveal at the end, it's not that big, so don't get too excited about that. And there's not going to be any more blueprints, so apparently that's not very cool. Um, so, uh, who's, who's, uh, who uses OpenStreetMap? So I was trying to look at who uses it and maybe why they use it, and uh, what that kind of tells us about kind of where we're going. Um, and there's a little log kind of there, which is very interesting. Um, so, what we've got here is a graph which shows um, people exiting the last three months in Scotland. So, the, the, on the far side here is like the total number of people exiting in Scotland. So, it's almost 400 people in the last three months have contributed something or, or maybe edited a feature that was already there. Uh, this, this column shows number of people who are exiting cycling infrastructure, which are sort of broadly put down as sort of cycle ways or cycle paths or um, uh, cycle parking. So you can see a huge number of people who edit OpenStreetMap are really interested in editing cycling infrastructure. Um, uh, comparing that to, you've got um, people who are, in the last few months who have edited buildings, it's like about half people edit buildings. And then right down here is um, well, natural features of so things like water, woods, uh, trees, that sort of thing. Only 11 people have edited those in the last few months. So it kind of gives you an idea of what's going on. Um, and so, so I thought I'd try to maybe explain why there are these main differences. Um, <coughs> So, so why are there so many cyclists uh, sort of into, well, people interested in cycling adding features to OpenStreetMap? Well, I think there's real good reasons to be adding cycling information to OpenStreetMap because you get a lot of feedback. You get there's a great uh, website, cyclestreets.net, which gives you cycle routing, which is really handy, and there isn't really a, an equivalent out there from any other sort of mapping providers. So it's a really good. Uh, use of it. There's also uh, a deep, well, one of the layers on the main OpenStreetMap website is the cycle layer, so you kind of get fairly instant feedback if you add anything to the map, you, you can see it within a, within a week or so on the cycle map. So there's kind of, uh, you know, lots of tools out there and lots of reasons to add cycling information, but maybe for the other reasons there isn't so much. So, it's, uh, so what about sort of rural mappers? Is there a rural mapping community? And maybe that those, those 11 people who have edited uh, natural features in the last three months, maybe they're the kind of people interested in uh, mapping rural areas, because that tends to be kind of rules and stuff. So there was a little conversation, how, how do you increase uh, OSM data density in rural areas? And you know, what could it be saying, like one edit at a time? But maybe we can kind of build tools to encourage people to map in rural areas where where it doesn't seem to be as much interest in mapping. So, uh, hmm. uh, right, my slides are <coughs> in there, but what, what I made was a, a map of Scotland, I've divided it into 10 grid squares and counted the number of nodes in each, in each grid square to give you an idea of this sort of rough mapping density within each 10 grid square. So you could sort of see where areas haven't been mapped in so much detail and where there's more mapping. And then the idea was you'd be able to sort of go in, add a, add a few nodes in that area, and then uh, you'd get feedback, and that grid square would sort of change, slowly change colour, and you'd sort of see the map sort of 
slowly getting more complete. So um, that, that's sort of one idea I'm, I'm kind of working on to try and encourage rural matters. Um, but the other, the, the other sort of group I'm interested in is uh, how do we encourage uh, sort of local community mapping. So folks who are interested in, in improving uh, the area where they live, various community groups out there who are, who are interested in that. And um, uh, so we've already mentioned earlier, Chris mentioned that uh, we did a mapping party in Slight uh, connection problem there, I think. Uh, but uh, we did a mapping uh, party in uh, Dunbar in East Lothian. This local group were really interested in uh, uh, mapping sort of, sort of active transport, sustainable uh, transport in their area. And so we oh, it's just, it just looked in until it was in the mouse. I have a look, I think we saw it earlier. Really. Um, we mapped map Dunbar in like, loads of detail, so it was, it was a really good, um, really good sort of mapping part of the day, and, and I think a lot of things came out of that. So, the slide. so one great tool for sort of encouraging people to map their local communities is Open Eco Maps, and maybe not not that many people have heard of Open Eco Maps, uh, but it's based on Open Street Map, and it allows you to um, kind of map a sustainable kind of living assets in your area. So uh, if we sort of zoom in, this is Dunbar, the Dunbar area here, and you can see things, it'll, it'll highlight um, uh, where, where you've got some cycling and solar panels and um, uh, allotments and car sharing points. So it's kind of, it's a nice little tool to kind of start people to uh, start mapping their area and sort of picking up these uh, sustainable living uh, assets. Uh, but uh, the OpenStreetMap community in Dunbar were kind of more interested in uh, sustainable transport. So they, they wanted to improve the cycling infrastructure in Dunbar and they wanted to kind of get an idea of what they had already. So I kind of did this sort of blurry map um, of the cycling infrastructure in Dunbar. And in sort of a blue green is where the cycling is already. Uh, red lines are roads or pedestrian areas. And you can see there's, there's quite a lot of cycle infrastructure there, but you know it's quite fragmented. So they wanted to get an idea where, where was the best place to sort of start building maybe new cycle, cycle uh, lanes and stuff. Uh, and they're also interested in improving access to their local station. So um, there's a station there, just in the center of the picture where that arrow is pointed. And that's, that's the current situation. There's, there's only one access route to the station coming down from the north. Uh, and they thought there was probably a real potential just to add a, a, an entrance from the east side. There would be a small connect, connection, a like footpath or a cycleway, so that people could sort of get access from the east, so they wouldn't have to walk all the way around. And that, that really kind of makes the station much more uh, within easy walking distance of, a, of quite a number of houses. And that might uh, reduce the number of car journeys or uh, increase the number of train journeys. So they're sort of going to use this map to um, talk to the local train company to see if they can get better access to the station. So you can see, that, I suppose, they're quite, quite sort of specialist um, needs of the local communities. They want to know about routing. They want to know um, sort of maybe information which isn't necessarily straight away uh, visible on the map. So uh, maybe we need sort of slightly better tools for local communities, to, local community groups to kind of uh, interact with the map. Um, so I, I sort of, I've only very roughly done this, but it's sort of, I, I really want to work on a tool which maybe helps um, community groups kind of analyze what's in their area and kind of understand it a little bit, and maybe see what they've already got there already. So uh, this is a fairly basic one. This is Dunbar again, and this is just a this is a script. So it's quite easy to uh, apply this script to anywhere in the world. Um, and this one's just highlighting streets which have uh, street lighting or have been tagged with street lighting. So uh, if you're interested in maybe increasing or decreasing the amount of street lighting in your area, that would be a good place to start. Uh, but at the moment, you can't really see that on any default maps. So it's kind of a fairly simple tool, but, but um, you know, it might be useful for some things. Um, and maybe sort of looking at land use, so trying to get an idea of how, how the land's being used in your local area. So this again is the, the Dunbar area, 
and you, know, you can see so there's 40 hectares of uh, buildings, hectare of playgrounds. And again, this is all just coming out of OpenStreetMap data and then sort of making it in a more kind of, uh, I suppose, easier to visualize way in terms of pictures. But that sort of thing is, I think, you can build on and get a better understanding of how, how the land's being used in the area. So you can see here that um, you know, there's more car parks than there are playgrounds, for instance, but there's more park areas than there are car parks. So you kind of get a feel that maybe Dunbar's quite a green place, quite nice place to live. Um, again, Dunbar, so sort of um, just pulling out kind of basic data about what's, what's in Dunbar. Like, so how, how many uh, bus stops are there? How many uh, cycle parking areas are there? Is there car, electric car charging stations? Are there car sharing um, places? So sort of quickly uh, have a look at things like that. But then you can kind of compare and contrast. So that's Dunbar's uh, transport assets, or at least some of them. But you can compare it to North Berwick. So, you know, it looks like Dunbar a little bit ahead of the game on car, electric car charging stations and car sharing courts in North Berwick. But that might just be because they're not going to be mapped in North Berwick, but um, it sort of depends on the mapping quality. But, um, so again, you can do, uh, you can look at, say, cultural assets, what do we have in our, um, you know, local area in terms of, you know, museums or libraries. And uh, how does that compare with another area? So Dunbar is twinned with a town in California called uh, Martinez. Uh, so I thought I'd compare it with, with Martinez. So uh, Martinez seems similar to size. It's got libraries and museums, and it's got quite a few schools, very similar. But it doesn't have any pubs. So I don't, I don't know. If, I, don't, I don't know if that's a good twin or not. But uh, you know, you can start to basically you know understand your area. What, 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 what's sort of good about my area? What, what do we have? What don't we have? You know, stop, stop to break things down a bit. <laughs> so, you know, they're very sort of rough ideas, but um, uh, I'm hoping to develop some of these on, in the hack, on the hack day on Sunday. Oh, I so, um, so, come on to the hack day. Uh, again, this isn't quite working properly, but so I'll zoom in. It's just down the road from here, if you're not sure where it is. Um, so, you just turn it right up the building, go straight down the road, past the meadows, and you're right, and it's just just past the meadows uh, in, a, in the summer hall. I'll just get to do it. So, uh, anyway, if you want to know, you can check out the little wiki website, but it's just not good. So, um, if you're interested, come along uh, and sort of develop any ideas around the street map, then please do. Uh, so, I've got a little Twitter app running, and it's picking up tweets, which, well, this is just picking up tweets, which has the hashtag we're using for the conference. Um, but I was wondering, I've got a couple of ideas of Hack Day, and I'm not going to be able to do them all. So if you can vote on which Hack Day activity I should develop by doing a tweet, which includes that first bit, that's uh, SOTN stop one. So if you like the idea of maybe a tool which will help rural mapping and sort of looking at mapping richness in rural areas and trying to encourage people to add to it, and then tweet that, that sort of hash. If you're interested in more like a community uh, dashboard type thing, so maybe some tools to look at what's in your local area and how to you know, compare it with other areas, then tweet that. And uh, if you're interested in um, sort of looking a bit more about it, OSN stats and like who's been using OSN and uh, how many people will be using it and that sort of thing, then, then I'm happy to look at that so you can sort of pick and decide. Um, I'm kind of interested in all of them, so. Uh, and you can uh, maybe leave a comment as well, and then I can, if you've got any other thoughts, I can uh, sort of have a look at those tomorrow. So, I don't know if people have tweeted at all, but I feel like I can run my Twitter app, and, uh, and anyone streaming, the stream online, so if I'm online, can tweet those hashes and uh, pick them up. Um, hopefully this will work. Now uh, this is the, the light test that, uh, There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Put one vote in. <laughs> Slightly disappointing. <laughs> but uh, so it looks like I'm going to be doing, uh, uh, yeah, whatever that was, the community dashboard. This is, this is tricky. Uh, so I think that's, that's almost it. So yeah, there isn't much of a real, but all these slides are in HTML. It's 
HTML5 and I'll put them on the web. And what the code for producing those maps are in the web are in the slides themselves. So if you've got if you know anything about R, you can run you can run the slides in R and regenerate those um, maps sort of on the fly. So that's my that's my reveal. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> nice, that's it.